Hello everyone, welcome back to K's Models. My name is Greg and today we are going to be taking a look at a brand new product from Golden Gate Depot, their Southern Pacific Daylight Set. In this video I'll be going over a little bit of background history on the prototype, my thoughts on the model, and then I'll be showing you going around the layout. So stick around. So to start off this review, let's go over a little bit of background history on the Southern Pacific Daylight. So the streamlined version of the Southern Pacific Daylight made a debut on March 21st of 1937, initially comprised of 12 Pullman passenger cars hauled by a GS2. Later, more passenger cars and newer steam engines were added as ridership increased. The train ran between San Francisco and Los Angeles uh, as part of the Coast Daylight, which was what was the most famous variant of this train. There were multiple trains with the uh, Daylight... Uh, name, but most of the time the Coast Daylight is what is going to be talked about. As a result of its colors and its route, it became incredibly popular and as a result became uh, very profitable for the Southern Pacific, which resulted in them having to expand the service with services such as the Morning Daylight, uh, the Noon Daylight, uh, other trains would get the daylight treatment, such as the the Sunbeam or the San Joaquin Daylight, as well as the Lark, which was basically the same route as the Coast Daylight, but ran at night and had similar streamlined cars, but were a two-tone gray. Later on, as with pretty much all passenger trains in the later diesel era, we would see a sharp decline in ridership, as well, and which resulted in less money for the trains. And as a result, uh, Amtrak would eventually take over service of the Daylight in 1971. The Daylight train does still technically exist as a route, but not in name. Amtrak still runs the route as the Coast Starlight, which runs between Los Angeles and Seattle, Washington. A lot of which on the original route of the Coast Daylight. Alright, now let's go into the model. So the model was available as a 8-car set as well as extra cars such as the three-quarter dome, a chair car, an articulated coffee kitchen diner, or an articulated chair car set. Those were available as add-ons depending on which version of the daylight that you wanted. However, if, if you wanted a basic daylight set with just the bare essentials, you could get the eight-car set, which uh, included a chair baggage car, a chair car, a tavern car, an articulated coffee shop, kitchen diner, a parlor car, and the observation. Most of the cars were made, are made out of extruded aluminum, except for the three-quarter dome, which is a brass car. These cars are equipped with knuckle couplers, roller-bearing wheel sets, and LED flicker-free lighting throughout. You could get this train available in the Southern Pacific scheme, as is shown here, or also available in the earlier Southern Pacific Lines scheme. The three-quarter dome was available in multiple other schemes, such as the Southern Pacific scheme here, uh, the Union Pacific Armor Yellow scheme, uh, Amtrak, as well as uh, Canadian Pacific, as Canadian Pacific ended up actually buying one of these cars for their uh, office car special. These cars are also equipped with, with uh, fully detailed interiors, separately painted tables, chairs, as well as figures. Also in the windows, we'll have uh, individually applied uh, window shades at, at random heights uh, to better replicate how people actually would have been using the car and how they, how they would have been setting the window shades by the window. As this is the three rail version, this car, these cars are equipped with knuckle couplers. The, uh, the knuckle couplers that they use are, have been very solid. Uh, if you are not a fan of knuckle couplers like I am, you can take these off very easily with just two screws and upon and you can order KD mounts, which there are pre-drilled holes for, in these cars on the bottom if you wish to run KDs. On the rear of the observation, it is equipped with a, with a KD from the factory. Notably, these couplers also lack the uh, thumbtack. In my opinion, that thumbtack takes away some of the from the car a little bit. You know, if, once you notice it, however, without it, uh, you focus more on the car, especially when uh, on cars like this where the diaphragms don't reach out and meet. 
Uh, however, with that in mind, I may actually go and convert this train to KDs in the future, as well as a couple other things regarding the interior, adding figures, changing some things. So uh, in the future, I may do a video on the changes that I make to this set, but as for right now, this is a very well done set. Before we continue on, I just want to say a couple words on the three-quarter dome. Uh, this is a separately available brass car as an add-on. It is beautifully done with uh, different underbody detail as the aluminum cars. The interior is well done with all the separately applied ashtrays, tables, separately painted uh, chairs and tables as well as the figures as well as the lighting, which is a good hue. I really like the color that the golden yellow that they chose for this. I think it better represents lighting that would have been available at the, in cars at this time. Uh, one minor issue that I have with this car is on the interior in the kind of like solarium area where it can, where then it steps up to the three core to the dome area. Uh, you can see the walls are slightly moving inward. Uh, it looks like they just weren't properly attached at the factory. I plan on opening this car and maybe adding figures in the future, so that I will address this, but uh, I wanted to film this video so I can give this set a proper review before I make any alterations. Prior to filming this video, I probably put about four hours of runtime on this set, which I think was a decent amount to figure out... Uh, any issues. Um, one minor issue I ran into was with the add-on uh, details that go underneath. These are optional parts. Uh, you get, for each car, two sets of air hoses and two uh, steam heat lines. These are screwed in with just one screw. They're completely optional. Uh, the third rail has been doing this for a while now. Uh, the first set that I remember I had to do it on was the first run of the Olympian Hiawatha. And since then, I've seen the, these also on the North Coast Limited and the 1938 Super Chief. Um, I haven't run into any issues with these before besides screws sometimes stripping out and causing the part to fall out, but that's only happened once and that was quickly remedied with a standard, uh, just re-tapped it or a larger screw. Uh, however, one issue I ran into on this was that the steam heat detail was actually causing couplers to hang up on 072 curves which is the minimum for this set. You can probably fix this very easily with just slightly bending uh, or manipulating the detail. It is just a brass casting, so it wouldn't be that wouldn't be too hard to accomplish. But uh, I took them off just because it was just one screw uh, to take these off with just a locating pin. It wasn't a difficult uh, process. One other thing that was done on these cars was the magnetic cloth diaphragms. Now this was a idea and concept that originally came out on the Rock Island Rocket set. Uh, that train was mainly articulated, and what that allowed for was what that allowed for was uh, these cloth diaphragms with metal ends on them, with uh, magnets embedded into the ends of the cars, which allowed for a seamless diaphragm that went around curves. In my experience with the cloth diaphragms these only really work on articulated cars just because of the way the physics are of a articulated set versus a regular coupled set especially even when going around wider curves like on the back side of my layout we have um, 099 curves even at that wider curve the magnetic diaphragm no matter how much material you put on it doesn't really work out so what was happening was on the non-articulated section of the rocket set, the um, the diaphragm would pull off, and it really did not look good. So whenever I ran that set, I would only have that those cloth diaphragms in in between the articulated cars, and I carried that same practice over to the daylight here. This is the three car articulated set that comes in the um, eight car set and 
in between the cars you'll notice I have the cloth diaphragms. Now, he, the Golden Gate Depot did include cloth diaphragms, one per each car, except for the um, three-quarter dome because that has a different diaphragm style. But if you look at the ends of the cars, you will notice there are magnets embedded into the ends of the cars in order to use these cloth diaphragms. However, no matter how strong those magnets are, the problem is is that once you hit a certain, you can put enough material on these diaphragms to make them go around the curves and not pop off. The problem on the rocket was that there wasn't enough material uh, because for the non-articulated cars. The problem on these is that there is enough material, but the problem is that there's too much. And as a result, you end up in a situation where you could see here, it's actually bowing out slightly because there's too much material on these and it doesn't, and it's not, there's nothing to keep them, the cloth from staying in line with the rest of it. So that causes it to bow out. And I've seen pictures on other, uh, from other people that have gotten these sets where it's just sticking out like maybe three scale feet out the side of the car. And I've run into that same experience as well. Like I said before, I'm, res I'm only going to be using these on the articulated cars and the ones that I'm going to be using on the articulated cars. And I've cherry picked the ones that came out of these sets to pick out the ones that don't bow out as much. In the future, I plan on taking one of these or a couple of these and cutting mater some material out of them to make them not bow out as much. Like out of all of the ones that I got, which was something like, I think they, I think it was eight cars, so you got like eight of these diaphragms. Out of those eight, these were the two best that I could find. So I plan on pulling some material out of it, re cutting it out, and then re-adding that metal plate to magnetize it and see how that goes. If I do that, as well as any other changes I make to this train, I will be posting those in a future update video. Overall though, the diaphragm issue is really just a very minor gripe compared to the rest of these cars. Overall, I really do love these cars. They came out beautifully and are just a perfect match, especially if you got those Southern Pacific Daylight PAs from Third Rail. I regret missing out on those. Um, but anyway, overall, I give this set high marks all around, uh, especially with the paint and the de and details and its and its running quality. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's go into the running. For power today, we are going to have a Lionel Southern Pacific GS2. <laughs>
All right, so that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe to see more reviews and projects from me in the future. I have a bunch of stuff ready to finish and just I can't wait to get out onto the channel. So leave a like if you liked it, comment down below if there's anything that you want to see, any comments, suggestions, and I'll try and answer my best I can in the comments below. But once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.